We forget that Africa is a fundamental part of the world. And the reason why we do that is because for the most part of our history, staying alive as young adults, we have seen Africa as the world's largest single liability. We consume what we don't produce, we produce what we don't consume, and no economy survives on that kind of equation. So today my goal is to talk to you about the fourth industrial revolution and ask a very simple question. What if we can provide education and fourth industrial revolution skills to Africans? I'm going to ask the question of whether we can provide education to Africans. I'm sure you, you, you shake in your seats because you're like, well, I'm in a university. Well, my own five-year degree only gave me schooling and not education. Because when I left, I had to educate myself over and over again on the ideals that would make me indeed a global citizen. So today we ask the question, what if we can truly provide education and give fourth industrial revolution skills to the people who actually need it? You've heard about the Stone Age. You've heard about the Industrial Age. You've heard about the Information Age. In the last five years, the world has moved into a new age called the Age of Intelligence. An age that basically focuses on how you can apply information in entirely new ways. So some of the domains of learning that I would like to think about are data science, blockchain technology, which you probably know about because of cryptocurrency, Internet of Things, 3D printing, virtual and augmented reality. These are domains that the world is focusing on right now, but that several African countries, universities, educational institutions have refused to pay attention to. But there are a few rebels, a few good rebels, who are making a difference in artificial intelligence around our world. And what I hope to do today is to show you a model that can help you, whether you're a social entrepreneur, or whether you're an educator, or whether you are indeed someone who should be participating in this fourth industrial revolution, but who has not had a chance because there are no structured means by the government of the country called Nigeria. So we decided to set out and say, can we indeed train 10,000 African data scientists by 2022? That's just a few years from now. And if we can create a model perhaps and share this model on platforms like this, it will help people like you and I, who are indeed thinkers and lovers of information, to do something about it. What we started doing about two years ago, and that we intensified effort in, in January of this year, was that we started running a few good pilots. We wanted to show that marginalized communities, other than Lagos, Abuja, and Harcourt, where all the major things happen, can actually get access to artificial intelligence knowledge. So we started running a few pilots, and that's how you can start. If you need to give any form of support to a marginalized community, and you want to demonstrate that the investment of your funders will not go to vanity, then you need to run a few good pilots. After running pilots, you need to know your stats. This year, we've done seven boot camps, 1,208 applications, and we successfully trained 246 people. You must run your pilots, and you must know your stats. After knowing your stats, what is also important is for you to learn how to share your story. Sharing your story highlights your success story is very important. If you run a social enterprise in Nigeria, the, time, the chances are that you will not be placed in any particular frame because most people are used to non-profit organizations and for-profit organizations. They are not aware of the central point where you can make profit for the good of society. So you must tell a full good stories. Good stories like that of Bisola, who now has a data science job in Lagos, who would not have had that job if she didn't attend data science class. Or that of Dennis, who received a $5,000 USD grant, $5,000 grant, simply because he attended that program to research on food security. 
Stories like that of Brucey, who's been invited to an Ashoka think tank in Accra, or stories of Toby Bantu and his friends who won one million naira after they attended the boot camp. You must have your stories, and these stories is what can charge people to make things happen. Use local and international media. If you really want to make a difference, people will search for you on random search engines, whether it's Bing or Google or Hask or whatever, they will try to find you. And your news, your search engine optimization skills will come in handy in this. So you must use local and international media. And instead of fighting for your face to be spread on the pages of physical newspaper, you might want to find out whether they have an online platform and connect to their online platforms. Be open to partnerships. Half of the time in this world we live in, particularly in this part of the world, we like to do things on our own so that we can take all the glory. You must seek for partnerships. If you seek partnerships, you can basically, like we did, ask for uh, um, um, job pl placements in uh, countries around the world from partners who essentially would have use of the kind of people you're providing fourth industrial revolution skills for. You need to scale to other domains of learning. After you've run your pilot like we are doing now, we're moving from data science and now we're focusing on Internet of Things and we're taking it on to 3D printing or 3D manufacturing um, and eventually, perhaps before the end of the year, we'll be running augmented reality programs. Within this same domain, you need to scale and expand across the continent. There is no value in running a social enterprise that can only solve the problems in Nigeria. You need to find similarities across northern Ghana to Tanzania to Kigali, across the continent to try out your model and be able to demonstrate to the rest of the world that indeed is something that works. Then look for donations of devices and equipment that can indeed help people in those marginalized communities to be able to make a difference. I speak about the marginalized community and my example in this case is Akure, a place where a few years ago, six, seven years ago, when some of us lived here fully, we had to travel for 15 minutes meetings at the U.S. consulate. We'll go in the morning and come back in the evening because we had a test the second day. So you need to make sure that in order to give people who live in marginalized communities the kind of access that they need, that you find the opportunities for donations, for devices, the kind of things that would normally take them away from the city, from the, from the, from the townships to other cities, you can provide it in those local communities. Find technical partnerships. Most times it's not all about money. As we did, you need to look for sponsorship for international faculty. We have a number of international faculty members who are traveling to Nigeria and they are not coming to Lagos or Abuja. They are coming to Akure, they are coming to Benin, they are coming to local communities to volunteer their time and give value back. Joint research in deep technology domains. A few weeks ago we had meetings with a number of top technology companies in Nigeria, including Siemens, to identify how we can help them with R&D. So you need to jo do, create joint research opportunities in deep tech learning domains. For example, data science and blockchain solutions. Build exchange programs. This applies to any form of social enterprise you run. You need to build exchange programs and partnerships. And it doesn't matter whether you're in a university or you're out of school already. Build exchange programs and um, programs for outstanding scientists in your programs and for eventual partnerships. Eventually, you need to seek investment. So don't just build your model around some non-profit equation. People always want to support for profit scenarios. And if it does not provide profit on the long run, it is not sustainable, I tell you, my friends. So demonstrate your market size. For example, you can say AI and data science sales is at $60 billion annually. Let people know the value of these things and make sure your fact finding are basically correct. Show your revenue. In the first six months for us, for example, we already did $45,000 in a marginalized community because we used this model I just showed you. Be clear with your numbers. Show your investments. For example, you can say we self-invested $80,000. If yours is 80000 naira, it doesn't matter. The point is you're putting in something and we're seeking XYZ to expand. Make comparison when defending your case. You need to demonstrate to people around the world what you're trying to build, okay? If it's an e-learning platform, you might, you might want to compare it to Coursera or Quora. If it's a, a video sharing platform, you might want to compare it to YouTube, okay? Make comparisons, and this is what will make investors 
to warm up to you. Then know your unit economics. Your unit economics is what it takes you essentially to train or empower one person. Okay? What it costs you to train or empower one person. Identify your unit economics and demonstrate it to the people who will eventually be the ones to support you. Tell people the about the big picture. Show them the large scale. What you will look like when you scale. Where you will go where you, when you eventually scale. And more importantly, and finally, make sure you build a great faculty and advisory board. Nothing beats building a great faculty and advisory board. For your organization, regardless of the fact that you are the visionary, you need the right set of people on your board to give the right value that can position you for the greatness that you ultimately deserve. Thank you very much.